We are witnessing the fall of cable TV news. Chris Cuomo fired because he was colluding with his brother, the Democratic governor, to help out his campaign, a major conflict of interest. Don Lemon has been accused of something similar when Jesse Smollett on the stand said that Don Lemon was advising him, giving him private information using CNN's resources effectively to help him out. He's also been accused of assault. The story is pretty dark. CNN producer accused of coaxing parents, underage girls, into um, extreme, disturbing adult activities. It's from NBC News. John Griffin was charged with three counts of using a facility to, of interstate commerce to lure minors and their mothers to his Verm- Vermont home. Some have argued this is a CNN producer engaging in child trafficking. I'm trying to keep this one a little bit family friendly. So, you know, bear with me. This man in in, in question apparently worked shoulder to shoulder with Chris Cuomo. We got problems. We got very serious problems. There was a story recently about a CIA. I believe it was a CIA analyst who was engaging in um, attempted trafficking. We'll call it that. We'll just call it that child abuse. And apparently the CIA said, We are not going to, you know, we don't want to get this guy prosecuted because it could expose state secrets. And so you have people who genuinely believe there is a conspiracy among, let's just call it child abusers, to put it lightly when we shouldn't, we should should say uh, the committers of child, uh, uh, the committers of atrocities against children. And we're told over and over again by the media that it's uh, by many in the media that it's conspiracy. It's not true. Epstein was true. The Maxwell trial is ongoing. Not that anybody really thinks it's a, it's a real trial. But the stories about Epstein we knew. They didn't prosecute him. They slapped him on the wrist. They covered it up. New photos show Epstein at Queen Elizabeth's cabin, cottage, whatever. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend that all of this means that there is a coordinated cabal of people smuggling children and doing horrible things. I wouldn't go that far. I would simply say, More and more we are hearing that there are people in very serious positions of power who are friends with some of the most powerful, and they are abusers. An abuser is, I I, I, let's just say, monster, something way worse. How long did the machine protect Harvey Weinstein? Weinstein? Whatever. NBC News reports, CNN producer John Griffin was arrested by the FBI on Friday after a federal grand jury charged him with enticing minors to engage in unlawful adult activity at his Vermont property. Griffin, 44, of Stamford, Connecticut, was charged with three counts of using a facility of interstate commerce to lure minors and people claiming to be their parents to train them to be <clears throat> subservient. Let's put it that way. That's what they say. It's, uh, well, you know what? Here we go. This is, is, we're we're, we're gonna just, just spoiler alert for anybody who might have kids around, you know, this may not be something they want to hear about, but this is, this is very important. He was training them, as he stated, to be sexually subservient. Court documents did not list an attorney for Griffin, who has worked at CNN for about eight years, according to a story posted by the network. Quote, the charges against Mr. Griffin are, de- Griffin are deeply disturbing. We only learned of his arrest yesterday afternoon and have suspended him pending an investigation. According to his LinkedIn profile, Griffin said he worked shoulder to shoulder with ex-CNN anchor Chris Cuomo, who was fired earlier this month. And this we, we understand. And uh, he was helping his brother defend himself against harassment allegations. I mean, this stuff, it all comes full circle, doesn't it? Griffin used messaging apps Kick and Google Hangouts to communicate with parents of underage girls and convince them to allow him to train their daughters to be subservient to men because they are, quote, inferior, the federal indictment said. He believed that a woman is a woman regardless of her age, officials claim. This is sickening stuff. This is a CNN producer of eight years, shoulder to shoulder with Chris Cuomo. In June 2020, Griffin texted with the mother of two girls, ages 9 and 13, telling the mother that it was her responsibility to ensure the elder girl was, quote, trained properly. According to the indictment, Griffin transferred $3,000 to the mother for plane tickets from Nevada to Boston. In July 2020, the woman and her nine-year-old daughter flew to Boston, where they met Griffin and drove to his Vermont home. There, the girl was, quote, directed to engage in and did engage in 
Things that a child should never be made to do. We'll put it that way. With an adult, according to the indictment. Griffin faces a mandatory minimum sentence of 10 years imprisonment and up to life in prison for each charge if convicted. How is there a 10 year minimum for this? We need some people to spend more time locked up and some people to spend less time locked up. Nonviolent offenders. Somebody who's chilling in their house and they're, uh, you know, rocking a ganja or something. Okay, look, man, libertarian wise, you, you're minding your own business. You should be free to enjoy your life, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But when you start involving children, okay, if you, if, if, if this is not, this is where we're now no longer at victimless crime. Let's say you're somebody who smokes pot. In some states, it's legal recreationally, but not legal if you give it to kids. That's when I'm like, okay, there needs to be a penalty or a punishment or something to stop this. Laws. Now, I'm not a fan of the prison system. Don't get me wrong. But that's why I think one of the issues is when I when I look at the prison system and I say it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work for someone who's like engaging in a victimless crime. Someone who is constitutionally bearing a gun, but not legally, according to the unconstitutional laws passed by their state. And this person's going to go away for four to five years or whatever. What, what did the person do? I know he had a weapon, but Constitution allows it, right? Why should that person go to a prison that's not going to help him, not going to rehabilitate, especially when it's a matter for constitutional law? What about someone who is, you know, smoking pot in a state that where it's not legal? How is prison going to help that person or change anything or or help anybody else? If you're minding your own business in your basement, your mom, let's let's just say this, you're sitting in your mom's basement playing World of Warcraft and you and you spark up and then the cops show up and they're like, you got too much. That's a crime. How is prison helping this person? How is it helping anyone in the community? It's not at all. Just pissing everybody off. Now, let's say that dude was inviting minors over and, you know, handing stuff to them. Okay, there you go. Now, I still don't understand how prison is going to help the person. But in this point, I understand how prison will prevent someone from preying on minors that I get. In this instance, a 10-year mandatory minimum. Well, it sounds like they're saying that, you know, with, with mandatory minimums, there could be less. No, no, no. Okay, look. This story, I believe, warrants life in prison, period. Just straight up life in prison. If you are going to do these things to children, then we need to remove you from society. And he faces life in prison. And good. Good. Now, in this, when, this, when we ask this question about prison, then, life in prison, we are not looking for rehabilitation. No, we are saying straight up, you are not allowed out. We're taking you out of society. You're going to live. You're going to have food. You are losing your freedoms via due process because you have done unspeakable things to children. But they would actually release these people. That's the craziest thing to me. If somebody is going to go into a liquor store with a gun and point it at someone, I think that's the kind of person that should go away for a long, long, long time. Why? Well, we can try to rehabilitate them. But if you're committing violent crimes against other people, we're going to remove you because we don't want those violent crimes and always with a fair trial and always through due process. So I will I will stress this guy's innocent until proven guilty. I want to make sure I'm completely clear about that, because, you know, just because the FBI says something doesn't mean I'm just going to believe it. Yeah, especially. No. However, I still think it's important that we consider the seriousness of the crimes and there should be a proper uh, bail hearing. And I think our, our, our courts typically struggle to have proper bail hearings. But if the police can present a preponderance of evidence that shows like he did this, like literally just being like, here's the messages. Are those your messages? And if he's like, yeah, lock them up. And then we'll, uh, you know, we'll start going through what the law, like what the law is and, and, and how long this person will serve. And I think this person should go away for life, for life. I don't think people should pray on children should be allowed out recidivism rates are really, really high among child predators. So why would we just be like, okay, you're free to go. Mm -mm. Now, Don Lemon himself as we is facing, uh, um, you know, a court case of his own, but he does have a legal victory. Now, this is the, now we're moving to the bigger picture here with the fall of CNN and the outright collapse of cable news. When you see what's going on at CNN with this predator, when you see what's going on with, with Don Lemon and Jesse Smollett and Chris Cuomo, these are, these, these are corrupt, corrupt institutions. Now, look, I am not an unreasonable person. If CNN didn't know what this guy was doing, I can't blame them. This guy's a criminal. If 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 they didn't know what Don Lemon's doing, well, I can't blame them. You know what Don Lemon did as a private individual outside at a bar or whatever? That's not on CNN. I don't like CNN. I think they're really awful. However, 
CNN does know that Don Lemon sent a message to Jesse Smollett giving him information on what the police were saying. That's information that's a major conflict of interest, especially in the story he was reporting about. For that, he should be reprimanded. I'm not someone who thinks you just immediately go up and fire someone. You got to give people a chance. You got to be like, dude, you crossed the line. I'm warning you now. I always say three strikes. I think three is good. If it were if it were me and someone here did something like that, I would say, never do that again. You've been warned. Okay? If they did it again, I would say, you were told not to do it. You are now being warned that if you do this ever again, you will be terminated on the spot. And if they do it again, you fire them. So the first time they do it, that's kind of like, uh, you know, maybe there's something they did they didn't realize was wrong. Now you're like, okay, now you know it's wrong. The second time they do it, and I'm, and I'm talking about like Don Lemon and the conflict of interest. I'm not talking about what the other guy was doing. The second time they do it, you say, you have willfully and deliberately done something wrong that you knew was wrong. You will get one more chance. Then you're gone. Now, as for Don Lemon, however, this is interesting. He, he actually uh, um, has a victory in his case of assault. Now, the reason I highlight this story is that what we're dealing with is CNN and their history of helping predators. Well, I shouldn't say that's a little too hyperbolic. But they have the CNN, this, this, this producer who is doing these horrific things to children. You have Don Lemon, who's accused of doing something really disgusting to a guy at a bar. And then you have Chris Cuomo, who is actively trying to help his brother after uh, his brother, Andrew, was accused of harassment, among other things like grabbing women. Well, Don Lemon has a victory here. This is interesting. CNN anchor Don Lemon saw a legal victory recently after a magistrate judge in his assault case recommended that the accuser be sanctioned for engaging in egregious conduct, including deleting social media posts and messages in which he alludes to paying a friend if he won the court case. Let me just tell you guys something. If you are suing someone, shut your mouth. What is wrong with these people? They're just like, I filed a lawsuit. I'm going to blabber and just say dumb stuff all over the Internet. Okay, well, that will come back to haunt you. If you are being sued, shut your mouth. There's nothing you can say that's going to help you. And all of the, all that ends up happening. I mean, there's things you can say, but that's not what people do. They come out and this guy said he apparently said he was going to be paying his friend if he won. Oh, geez. Well, you're going to lose. Okay. Maybe not, though. Maybe not. The ruling was issued in November. The magistrate in a federal district court in New York said Lemon's accuser, Dustin Heiss, should be ordered to pay a portion of the CNN anchor's legal fees and recommended that Lemon be granted an adverse in infer- uh, inference instruction once the case goes to trial in January. Heiss has filed an objection to the magistrate's recommendation, and the trial judge has not yet ruled. Interesting. The instruction would allow Lemon's legal team to tell the jury in ultimately deciding the case that Heiss had intentionally deleted or destroyed evidence and that the jury may presume that the, in- that the intentionally lost or destroyed evidence would have been unfavorable to Heiss. Heiss's attorney told People that he is contesting the recommendation. Quote, that issue is pending before the district court and Lemon's position has not been adopted by the district court at this time. We are contesting the magistrate's recommendation, attorney Robert Barnes told People in an email statement. Lemon has emphatically denied the allegations laid on the lawsuit that in August 2019 and stemming from an alleged July 2018 incident without claims, the anchor, uh, which claims that the anchor physically and verbally attacked Heiss, a bartender during a night out at the Hamptons. I don't even want to say what he did because it's disgusting what he was accused of doing. They say uh, Heiss was working as a bartender when Don Lemon jammed his hands down his pants and then assaulted the man. The two had no further interaction. They go on to mention what happened. The behavior, Lemon's attorney suggested in court filings, directly undermines, undermined Heiss's factual allegations and claims of emotional distress. That's not true. That's not fair. But you shouldn't go out on social media and start blabbing and start saying crazy stuff. Now, look, we'll see what happens with uh, the assault claims against Don Lemon, this other producer who is now, has been indicted and is being charged. But these are sick people. And I don't care if the if the accusations of the criminal uh, nature are true. Regardless, the people at CNN are sick people. Don Lemon is one of the worst people on TV. Chris Cuomo is one of the worst people on TV. And CNN deserves to finally just sunset. We'll call it that. From The Guardian. CNN mess over Cuomo shows dangers of news as entertainment. It's true, though. You know, it's very true. 
I think a lot of people watch. Well, obviously, people watch this show for, you know, uh, informative and entertaining value. And it used to be that we would turn on the news and the news was dry. I remember that the five o'clock news, 10 o'clock news, whatever, depending on where you live. I think Chicago had like nine, 10 and 11 or whatever, five o'clock news. And they would just talk. They probably still do. And it was mostly dry and mostly boring. Today, Jeff Zucker, the reality TV guy, takes over at CNN and turns the network into a parody of itself, into a reality TV show, into a, 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 an opinion network. You know, and truth be told, that's what people want. It's what people want. Nobody, nobody wants to watch uh, a very dry, boring. Today, 17 vehicles were in a pileup on the just outside of Washington, D.C. The mayor came out and said, nah, just people don't want to watch that. That's what people do. Some people want to, but we want for only a few minutes just to get the core elements of what you need to know for the day. What most people want today is opinion, opinion commentary. CNN knew it. The problem is there is still an opening for a more middle of the road news approach to stories. And many of the stories that I actually cover are a little bit, little bit more exciting than just the dry news read, but some of them are pretty straightforward and lacking any, you know, political opinion, still opinionated. What I mean is, for instance, when I was talking about Ukraine versus Russia, most of my opinions were on what Russia wanted, what the U.S. wanted, what we could potentially see. But a lot of it was just very much like, here's what's happening. Here's what they're saying. Here's where we go. Now, Russia's wanted this before. We'll see what happens versus the more direct opinion piece where the people are saying the U.S. should not be involved in Ukraine and, you know, Joe Biden, blah, blah, blah. Now, obviously, a lot of that stuff is still in, you know, uh, videos I've made. I'm saying that CNN doesn't do that. I mean, Anderson Cooper does a, does a decent job. He really does. I just think these people live too much in a fictional reality. What happens is when people like Chris Cuomo and Don Lemon spin a yarn and then people believe it, then they report garbage fake news. And so a really great example was when I was on uh, the Joe Rogan podcast recently and some of the there was some, there were a bunch of comments on the podcast and one of them was like, or I don't, I don't know, uh, I think it was on uh, it was, maybe it was on Reddit. And they said, I've been listening for 45 minutes and it sounds like this guy is making all of this stuff up. And it's really amazing. It's really amazing. They would think that everything I said, you know, is sourced by Bill Gates approved news guard certified news sources. That doesn't matter. Somehow the media has convinced people to to ignore what they see with their own eyes and ears and just believe this fictional matrix reality. Stories that I love to bring up, like the Ukraine scandal with Joe Biden. Joe Biden did. Quid pro quo, the president of Ukraine. He said, if you want the U.S. aid, a billion dollars, you got to fire the prosecutor. It just so happens the prosecutor was investigating Burisma, where his son was a board member. And the president, of course, did it and, and fired the prosecutor who then filed the claim and said, this is Joe Biden's doing. But they, but they will have you believe, if you watch CNN, that none of that is true. It's not just CNN. Aside from the disgusting nature of CNN, we're also learning that Chris Wallace is leaving Fox News to host a weekday show on CNN's new streaming service. That's right. Look, Fox News is, I'm not, a, I'm not the biggest fan, but I certainly think they're better than the other networks because you've got Brett Baer. You've got, uh, who else do you got? You've got uh, Bill Hammer, is that his name? You've got America's Newsroom, which is fantastic. Sorry, I'm forgetting the, the, the woman's name who hosts it. But uh, Tucker Carlson does a great job as well. Tucker's opinionated for sure. I don't think he's, he gets everything right, but he's a good dude. He's a good dude. I'm not a big fan of Ingram and Hannity. It's kind of, eh, you know, whatever. And, uh, but, but Brett Baer, he's a fantastic job reporting. Far from perfect, nobody is, but they have that. You turn on CNN, what do you get? Trash, opinion, garbage. Turn on MSNBC, wow. They don't even cover important stories. And now Chris Wallace leaving Fox News to go to CNN's new streaming service, CNN Plus. Oh, I love how they call it that, CNN Plus. No, it's not CNN Plus, okay? It's your, can your channel is dying. You're throwing a Hail Mary out there, but I get it. You need a streaming service. Um, you could just, I don't know, stream your actual channel, but whatever. I guess they're going to be doing on-demand streaming, more like, you know, Netflix or whatever. And Fox News is losing Wallace, but you know what? Good riddance. Wallace is establishment trash. He, he was going to fit right in at CNN. Fox News, what should you do? Right now, I think they're going to keep Hannity because Hannity does really well with the older demographics. All right, fine. I get it. Hannity's not the worst, but I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Laura Ingram either, but I think she's better than Hannity. Tucker, I'm a fan of. I think Tucker's fantastic. Um, I think they need to get rid of a lot of the stodgy suit wearing types 
And if they want to start focusing on the key demo, as everyone's demographic is aging out, they need to bring on, I mean, look, they got Gutfeld. Gutfeld's perfect. That guy is killing it. Massive in the ratings. That's what they need. Tucker Carlson, they need to hire younger people. They need to, I guess they, you know, look, I don't know. I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to tell them what to do. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I'll do. You know what I'll do? I'll make, I'll make my own network. We'll, we'll do a 24 hour news thing. We'll figure it out. And we're not going to have suits. We're not going to, we're not going to have suits. And you know what we're really not going to do? The Young Turks is just the worst, in my opinion. Look, you can come to my channel and I can say something like that. I'll give you my opinion. But I don't want 24 7 opinion stuff targeted at people and other networks, right? Young Turks likes to talk about, I don't know, me and Dave Rubin. And I'm like, it's just such petty. It's such petty trash. You know, and here I am talking about them. But at the very least, I'll say this. What I'm interested in talking about are the, ins- the seats of power and the institutions, not Dave Rubin. And I'll talk about what Dave Rubin is doing with locals and Rumble and the expansion of technology and big tech and censorship because it's the idea that matters. That's what we need. We need maybe not 24 hours. You know, maybe we would just have like re- reruns throughout the morning. We'll, 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 we'll do infomercials because it'll be funny. But just stream. You know, like 12 hours, we'll set up different shows. Maybe we'll do it. I think we should do it. We're building out a new studio. You know what? We'll do it. We will make a 24-hour YouTube live. It'll be live 24-7, and we'll have people hang out, and we'll report news, and we'll expand there. And it's not going to be that hard. You get six people. Each of them hosts two hours. There you go. And we'll talk with Super Chats. It's not going to be like cable TV. I'm I'm talking big right now, but I think we're going to do it. I think we should do it. If we can get this new building built, because the problem is, you know, the supply chain's disrupted. But uh, no, seriously, yeah, we're having trouble with that. But we'll get we'll get we'll get a couple we'll get a studio built, and then we'll just have uh, news type individuals just come and sit down, hang out, informal. Look at this, no suits, and we'll take we'll take we'll take super chats, and we'll pull up articles, and we'll have a rotating lineup of people. So throughout the day, people will pull stories, they'll talk about what they want to talk about, and we'll just have that news going. That's something we should do. 24 hour streaming news. And you know why that would work? The super chats will fund it. Not that I'm saying people are obligated to super chat, but I think if we were to replace what CNN's garbage is and actually just have news conversations and we're not going to do that stupid garbage of like, did you see what this guy said on YouTube? No. We're going to say, you see what Joe Biden said? You see what Kamala Harris sa- said? Did you see what, uh, you know, uh, big institutional powers are saying? And don't get me wrong. I think commenting on, you know, media is absolutely fine. I'm just saying I don't want to dedicate a network to being, you know, a Democrat opinion channel or Republican opinion channel. Now we're going to be moderate, middle of the road, talk about what we want, believe in freedom. Let's do that. Let's do it. Let's let's figure it out. I don't know. Who do I got? Who who do I got to call? I'll figure it out. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to leave it there. CNN is full of predators, gropers and awful people. And Chris Wallace. Good. You're going to do fine there. How about that? Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.